Hello and welcome to another episode of FPA Member Insights, a series of interviews where we will find out more about our members, discuss challenges that they face within their respective industries and their solution to these challenges. I'm Freya Green, the Membership and Engagement Officer here at the FPA and today I'm joined by Alex Bates who is the Director and Fire Safety Advisor at JRA Fire Safety Advisors. Thank you for joining me today. Alex, can you start by providing us with some more information about JRA Fire Safety Advisors, such as its history and some of the services that you offer? Um, so yeah, JR Associates Safety Limited was founded in 2006 by John Bates and Ron Field, two ex-West Midlands senior fire safety officers. The company was founded after both retired from the fire service. We actually fell right in time because in 2005 the regs reform fire safety order was obviously enacted but it didn't come into force until 2006. Obviously in 2006 that's where that's when we entered the market um, so it all sort of fell right into place unfortunately with their contacts they already had an established sort of connection with a local fire alarm company um, so naturally they went and visited that individual and that led to us taking on office space and that was really the kickstart of the, of the company because it allowed us to sort of get in with an established organisation and they sort of promoted us as a new company within the industry. But because there weren't many sort of companies around as it had just came into play, we sort of hit the market running. Um, so I mean now we offer fire risk assessments, fire compartmentation surveys, disease assessments, means of escape planning fire policies and strategies um, and I mean there are sort of main focuses. As you're conducting a range of risk assessment services as well as training what does a typical client look like for you for the services you're providing? So I mean we deal with many clients we have our sort of healthcare premises residential premises and then we go into the office and shops industrial and sort of manufacturing areas so these are typically clients that may have had an inspection from insurance companies or a enforcement officer and they may have been given a thing such as an enforcement notice or a prohibition notice at that point they then would then come to ourselves and that is where our job really starts so we start to look into their building and why they may have been given these notices or improvements to make so we tend to come across clients that might not not necessarily be up to standard and that's where we start and sort of provide our services to get them to a point where they're in line with the correct code of practice and that they're actually compliant. But we do also have some clients that are already sort of very good, very up to date, but they have it done again for the insurance side of things to maintain that sort of what I would call a tick in the box um, and make sure that they're compliant and obviously covered from a fire aspect. And what kind of challenges do you often face in the industry? I think. At the moment, we've had a lot of changes in legislation following Grenfell. Um, so over the last five years, I think there's been a massive sort of change within the industry. Um, and this has led to clients that are sort of, I'd say, being given information at the very late stages. I find a lot of the information that is sort of important is only shared through sort of organisations such as yourself um, or through the network. but not many clients are part of these networks because they don't need to be but then that brings this sort of place where you do a fire risk assessment a year later or a few years later and you're having to then mention things which you may not have had to mention before and I mean for a lot of clients they haven't necessarily budgeted for that occasion um, so then they're left in this area of sort of darkness of well how do we rectify it in the right time if we haven't got the budget for example um, and I think Another area that we find is that recruitment at the moment is very hard. Um, I mean, I was very fortunate because my grandfather's an ex-fire officer, so I left education and was sort of bought into it and mentored for two years. Unfortunately, at the time, the Institute of Fire Safety Managers, they brought out their sort of scheme to take you from nothing to sort of a competent risk assessor. And this allowed you to enter their tiered scheme. But I think if you look at sort of colleges, there's not a lot of promotion regarding the industry. If you look at universities, there's not many courses around. Um, so I think in many years to come, when the sort of old school fire officers retire, there could be a potential massive gap in the market where 
actually companies won't be able to cope with the demand um, and they'll be looking around quite frantically, which could lead to a shortage of supply within the industry. Do you have any advice for our viewers who are experiencing similar challenges for how to overcome them? I think we find that attending events with the appropriate bodies, I mean, the Institute of Fire Safety Managers do events, the IFE do events, obviously yourselves promote the industry quite well. So I find that going to these events, you come across sort of students who are currently in university who will eventually go on to leave. Um, and this means that they will then be looking for a job. So I think a lot of it is to do with networking, finding that younger sort of talent and putting sort of the feelers out there to identify when they might be ready to enter the industry. And I mean, there's always the opportunity to train people up um, so you can take them on sort of an apprenticeship scheme. But again, that takes a lot of resources and time. So, I mean, our key focus is sort of the networking side of things. There's a, the university side where you have people coming through is a great opportunity to meet people that will eventually want a full time job within the industry. Thank you, Alex. So having joined the FPA membership in 2021, what first interested JRA Fire Safety Advisors in becoming FPA members? I think as a company and with the way the industry was changing, we sort of wanted those updates emailed to us, not us having to hunt around for them. So I find that we get a lot of information from yourselves within the newsletter and magazines that actually saves us time in having to sort of look around for that information and to try and find that information. Uh, it saves us a lot of time and also allows us to just pinpoint the exact changes that are going to be sort of necessary for our clients. I think the second element is it gives our clients a lot of reassurance. Um, they see that we want to be part of an organisation like yourselves that promote fire and it gives them that sort of reassurance that actually we do take it seriously and we want to try and strive to be the best that we possibly can. Alex, thank you for joining me today and thank you to our viewers for watching. As an FPA member, you will have access to a wide range of exclusive member benefits, such as educational resources, industry updates and insights, and branding opportunities, to name a few. To find out more, please visit our website at thefba.co.uk. Likewise, if you'd like to find out more about JR Associates, you can do so by visiting jrasafety.co.uk.